Join Edwin Frondozo on the Business Leadership Podcast every week for a unique program featuring insights and actionable items from the world's most successful business leaders. Hear firsthand the exclusive interviews and personal journeys on how today's transformational leaders made it to the top. At the leadership level, you're actually motivating and you're convincing a group of people to get up every day and give it everything they've got. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have to give them a good reason to do that. And for me, that reason is so that they'll know you're always there for them. Knowing that you are there for them is super important. And to do that, you have to live all the values that you have asked them to live. This is the Business Leadership Podcast, and I'm your host, Edwin Frondozo. How are you doing? Thank you for taking the time to join me. I'm I'm really happy to have you. In today's episode, I share the conversation I had with Shrad Rao, the CEO of WagePoint. WagePoint is a simple payroll software for small businesses that are looking to simplify their payment processes. Shrad shares the main reasons why he became an entrepreneur, some of the tips that help him keep his culture intact, despite the fact that they are a 100% remote workforce. We dive into the benefits of diversifying your workforce. Today's episode is brought to you by Slingshot, a Canadian telecommunications leader in business VoIP services that empowers the emerging and innovative companies. Slingshot ensures that companies are communicating clearly to their customers, team members, and stakeholders. Unlike traditional telcos and other cloud providers, Slingshot understands what it takes to grow and scale a business. To learn more, go to slingshotvoip.com slash TBLP. And with that, here we go. Welcome to the Business Leadership Podcast, Rad. Hey, Edwin. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm super, super excited to have you. Just a quick story for all of you out there. Shred and I are basically coming full circle and I have the opportunity to interview him. Me and him met years ago when we were both starting up our tech uh, our tech startups. And, and here we are, full circle, and I get to share his story, Shrad. So welcome to the show. Um, can you actually start off by introducing yourself? Tell us maybe a little bit something about who you are and what you like to do when you're not growing and scaling WagePoint. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Shrad, as you know. Um, I'm the CEO of WagePoint. Um, so basically, that means I run the business, and sometimes the business runs me, you know, depending <laughs> on the day. Um, what do I like to do when I'm not running the business? That's a great question. Um, honestly, like, I think I, it's only been recently since I've even been able to think about what I can do outside of the business because it's come to a place where it's somewhat stable. So right now, I'm exploring everything from yoga to Lindy Hop, you know, taking some lessons or improv. Mm. Basically, sharpening all the skills that, you know, help me uh, just just help me feel like that energy, like so that I'm not sitting at the desk all day, or, you know, and so I get to like actually expend some of the vast stores of energy that I come with. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds fun, actually. I, I've been meaning to do something like that as well. Done. Um, we'll be dance partners next. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with WagePoint. Tell us about WagePoint. Uh, I know you mentioned you're you're running the business, and maybe maybe if you'd like, share what you're you know like what you're trying to accomplish over the next six to twelve months. Sure. Yeah. Um. So WagePoint sort of is uh, is the culmination of my entrepreneurship dream, or I, I, hopefully it's chapter one uh, mm -hmm. in the in my entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurship journey. It's uh, so I was one of those guys that was always going to be an entrepreneur my whole life, like, you know, or at least since I was consciously able to think about what I want to do with my time. Um, I've always loved the ability to control my own future, but also influence change. And most importantly, really manage the comp company I keep or curate the company I keep. Um, I really believe that, you know, if you surround yourself with the right people and the right attitudes, you will always do better than if you let that be chosen for you. Mm -hmm. So this has been a huge part of why I was driven to to become an entrepreneur. And um, 
for me, you know, I, I mean, I know a lot of people have these brilliant stories about, you know, they're brushing their teeth and then one day they realize electric toothbrushes are everything, right? Um, yeah. But I didn't have like a, I don't have like a, a product moment or a, a moment where I was thinking, you know, this, is, this thing has to be invented. For me, it was more about what is out there in the world that is not being done well for a certain group of people that I can create a wedge um, by doing it better. And so when I looked at uh, the payroll industry and I saw these legacy companies that have been doing it for a long time, and they were kind of doing it for everybody, you know, small businesses, medium business, large businesses, I was like, I have a feeling they're probably at the size that they are. They're probably treating customers like numbers. Um, and, you know, I don't want to call out anyone specifically, but there's like, you know, these companies have been in the business for a very long time. So they come with a mentality that is different than the one that I think I would bring. And so uh, the the reason that I started the company, you know, and I know this now more as I'm growing older and I'm understanding the reasons why I do anything a little mm-hmm. bit better, yeah. is I actually wanted to build something that, I could be proud of, fully in control of, or as much as possible, um, and essentially fix a problem that I thought was existing for a specific group of people. In our case, that became the small business community. So we didn't, we never looked at the medium-sized businesses, enterprise businesses, and we never get tempted to go in that direction either. We stay in the, the, the space that we know because we love the group of people that we work with. And that that's a very large group of people. So anyway, sorry, you see, I can be very passionate when I talk about it. Yeah, no, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. So, so the reason, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that people start businesses for all kinds of reasons. I knew exactly why I was going to do what I did. And I really wanted to build a community. That's really what the business meant for me, a community of people related to customers as well as employees, and then be able to live life on my terms. And that's sort of, you know, the why behind WagePoint. Now, like I said, when you take a specific, um, a specific industry and you think you could do that better, then, you know, it almost like you don't wait for the perfect situation. You just look for all the, the tweaks you can make to essentially mm-hmm. get yourself to, uh, to, 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 to get yourself in the market as quickly as possible and get feedback from customers. So that's, that's sort of like the philosophy that I've, I've taken from day one. No, that's great. That's great. Um, what's really interesting to me is, you know, this philosophy and creating this culture and serving in this community. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts in terms of like, you know, how, you know, I, th- I heard a term that how you are building the world's friendliest team. <laughs> I mean, from what you're saying, that sounds like that's almost the core of everything in your philosophy. So, so why is that important? And, and how do you really scale that? Yeah, dude, I'm, I totally, and you know, I use the word philosophy because it's such a big deal. It's such a big part of how I think about life. The way I think about building the business and the way I think about life is not dissimilar. In fact, it's very, very much the same. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I said world's friendliest team is because from the very, the first day, there's two things. Culture has been a very deliberate thing at Wagepoint from day one. It hasn't Mm -hmm. been an afterthought. I've known exactly the kind of, uh, environment that I want to build for people to participate in and enjoy. And I'm talking about employees. Mm-hmm. So how do they, how do you build something that like when you put a group of people together and if you don't give them any sort of playbook, people start acting like, you know, crazy people. Right. right. And so what, you, what I've done is from day one, I've made a very deliberate handshake almost with every single person that I've hired to say, this is how we're going to behave. This is how we're going to comport ourselves inside of the company. Are you cool with that? Not only are you cool with that, do you love that? Will you defend that yourself at some point? And that handshake has actually been one of the best decisions I've ever made, yeah. which is essentially telling somebody what it is that you're looking for, getting their buy-in as to the fact that they also want the same thing, and then you both going about your business, living that life. So that is sort of just from a philosophical standpoint, like I said, culture has been something that is a day one thing. And the second thing is I totally can empathize with the customer, especially a small business customer. as to what it must feel like for the first time they become an employer. If you think about it, right, you mm-hmm. get into the business of making, you have a cupcake shop, you're interested in making cupcakes, right? You're not really interested in the administrative stuff. And then when you have 
when you have a cupcake shop, you're not only, you know, in sales and marketing for all of that stuff, but you're also an employer. Suddenly now you've gone from being like a regular person who has no responsibilities and obligations <laughs> to anybody to mm-hmm. these massive amounts of responsibilities and obligations. And, and some of them can get you into some serious trouble, right? You could get sued. You could get, uh, you know, you could, ha- you could have to pay massive fines for tax uh, issues. So for me, the idea of a small business owner having to feel like when they, when they wrote into us or sent a ticket or even called in, if they, when they call us, we are assuming that they don't know a lot about payroll because it's not a core function for them. And yet they are, they have to know something about it, if not a lot about it. So when they call into us, it should feel like they're calling a friend. And like, you know, you phone a friend, have a question answered, or you, you, you write a, into a friend. That's what it should feel like. And so from the get go, the idea has been, we know payroll is highly inaccessible to a lot of people. Because, you know, it has to do with regulations and math, things people don't usually like. How do we actually uh, make it very, how do we make ourselves very approachable and accessible to people so that they can ask us questions and we can help them as a friend would? And that's really where it comes from, the world friendly esteem. Oh, I see. And, and I love it. I mean, because you also, from the culture that you part of, are you just, like you said, philosophy, I, I love that you're bringing it in and not really separating your business world and your personal world. And, and that that's things that I, things that I resonate with as well. And what's really interesting to me, um, from what I know about you and your business and, and, um, you've, this culture that you've developed, it's around, it's around actually, you know, cause I, I talk about future of work all the time and it, you, you built it around a remote workforce. Yeah, um, totally. I want to share a your thoughts on, you know, why you did that. Some of the challenges that you saw as you were growing this or doing the buy-in, because there's also managerial problem, not problems, but challenges uh, with the remote workforce. And the reason why I'm really focused on this is because as I grow and scale my business, I'm all about not being tied to an office. Um, I'm trying to think of how the future and the, the future of work. So this is really interesting. So let me, let me know your thoughts on this. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we kind of, we, we did this before it was really trendy. right? Yes. Um, and so at this point we have a pretty good process or a pretty good cadence for how we actually scale this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it actually comes back to the whole culture thing. Funny enough. Um, what is really interesting is even though we have a group of like, we're actually over 60 people, like 60 something. Wow. Um, I think this year we'll, we'll, handily you know cross that uh depending on you know a few factors we'll probably cross the 80 maybe even close to 100 mark depending on you know a few things that'll happen Mm -hmm. um but the the reality is that inside of our company the feeling of culture is is fully tangible Mm -hmm. it is literally something people can feel like we did an anonymous survey survey recently and um i mean of course of the employees and one of my favorite uh quotes that came from it was you know, why do you like working at WagePoint? And someone said, because I partly dream about living on a planet of crazy everything. And I kind of see my dream coming true. Ah, I love that. Right? Yeah. And so so the reason this was so, uh, this is such a funny and interesting thing is because the thing that I actually have made sure everyone feels, like, so the thing that I, I always talk to everyone about is I've always wanted to build a kind of company where everyone feels like their real self. Like they can actually bring their real natural self to work. Whoever they are in their homes, with their families, with their friends, that's who they can feel comfortable bringing to the office. It doesn't mean that, you know, obviously they, they can say and do anything. Like my job as CEO is to build the boundaries of culture. Like some of the things you shouldn't do, right? Like don't mm. be racist, don't be sexist, don't be a jerk, right? Don't hurt anyone. Mm-hmm. Those are the boundaries. But outside of that, do... I mean, we, they're adults, right? They're trusted in their everyday life to do things that, you know, <laughs> adults do. So why would I ask them to become some sort of watered down robot like version of themselves at work when the best part of them is the, is all of that variety and that diversity and that cool, you know, the, the people that they are in the regular life. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, hundreds, hundred percent. Talk to me about how you keep that culture intact of this craziness, 
you know, with the challenges of being a fully uh, remote workforce, um, yeah. like what are the tools or how do you guys do retreats? I'd love to get, you know, so, some of the things that you've learned and maybe some of the things that didn't work out. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's tons of things that don't work out, uh, but I'll start with the ones that do. Um, and, and sorry, I know some of the questions that I'm at, you're asking me, you're asking me a direct question and I'm taking an esoteric approach to it. Uh, so, you know, for example, how do you build a remote team? And what I said is you focus on culture. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, well, how do you build culture when there's, when people are not next to each other? Yes. Right? Which is kind of a crazy idea. And what I'm saying is that the way that you do it is by having a mutual understanding of how to behave with each other. That's what I'm saying. Right. So for example, so here's a simple uh, example. If any, let's say we're, we're talking to some people for a job. Let's say there's two or three people. First of all, we don't go to the market and say, you know, here's a thousand resumes. I mean, can we find a thousand resumes? We tend to be more selective. Like we will find other referrals or um, we will use a process uh, to find, like to basically do outreach to, to candidates that we're interested in. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing that happens is not a skills interview. It's what we call a culture call. So it's basically calling someone to check whether they'd fit our culture. And that is simply by saying, this is who we are as a group. So we don't talk about what we do. We simply say, this is who we are as a group of people. Are you, how do you feel about hearing that? And how do you feel about everything I just told you about who we are as a group? So imagine me as a representative of the entire company um, and of all the, the whole group of people inside of the company, not the functions and the tasks and the skills. Because some of those, those things, the functions, the tasks and skills are gimmies, right? To have had, to have, been narrowed down in the first place you should have had some of that stuff like if you're yes. looking for a payroll specialist and you only know how to like i don't know toast bread that's probably not we're not going to make it to the culture call right so that's like a that's sort of a baseline expectation and then when you're having this call with me the whole purpose is for me to tell you this group of people that i represent uh, that is sort of behind me this is who they are as a group this is how they think this is how they behave this is how we solve problems this is how we celebrate together if I told you, you could come to a place where you could just be yourself and all the things that cause you anxiety in your mind, you mm. could just like, let's say that a simple example of uh, things that cause you anxiety is if Edwin and I are talking, will I go and tell someone else that, right? What we just said to yeah. each other, right? That's a simple thing that happens in companies all the time. And that's actually yeah. what the core of politics is, is who knows what information. What if I said, <laughs> I, I would never, that is not acceptable here. What if I said, you never have to worry about that. So everyone always knows where they stand with the company and where they stand with each other. It's not that there isn't like minor, like, you know, disagreements or even like major disagreements, but that's all part of the human experience. There's nothing that's being snuffed out from someone where they are not feeling like themselves. So that, that culture call is where that is happening. And in that moment, somebody else, the, the candidate is making a decision as to whether this is the right place for them and mm -hmm. that is the time they're making that handshake where they're saying, if it is the right place, I will also comport myself in this manner. So I will not be the one to start this, you know, to begin the gossiping or to begin the toxicity in the environment. So that's sort of one way in which if you think about it, if everyone's having this call with me, just think about the amount of uniformity in the way that people are approaching problem solving and, and hanging out with each other. You right. see what I'm saying? Just a few words from our episode sponsor, Slingshot. Business leaders like you are now faced with challenges to ensure that their business and culture are not only profitable, but also a sustainable one. How does your workforce look like? As we move towards the growing gig economy and remote workforce, it is important to work with a communications partner that has the knowledge and experience. Slingshot understands the growing needs of business leaders and partners with you to ensure that your company is aligned with your vision, growth, and sustainability of the future. To learn more, go to slingshot.com slash TBLP. It's just letting down, I guess, the curtains. And this is who we are. Proceed with caution. <laughs> yeah, well, totally. Not, but proceed with the, your eyes wide open. Yes. Know who you, where you're coming. And because the when I tell someone that you can walk in here and be your, your true self, like whatever, your natural self, most people who have had to 
go to, a, a, you know, let's say a large corporation, sort of be a little bit, um, let's say stiff, <laughs> you yeah. know, hide yourself, they tend to go like, they tend to relax and they tend to enjoy the environment. And that is the whole, and, and the payroll, which is very intense, that's actually what allows them to be very friendly with the customers and stuff like that. We get right. tons and tons and tons and tons of messages saying that we're really friendly. This one guy said, um, you guys are so, are so kind. Every time you interact with me, I was, I was kind of grumpy. You guys are so kind that now I have to become even more kind than you just to <laughs> prove that I can do it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of almost like, a, and I don't want to say it's like a, you know, I, I don't, it's absolutely, there's no, uh, there's no sense of like almost a homogeneity in the company. It's very, it's still very eclectic, very disparate. It, it's, because it's really appealing to how humans live as people and not necessarily inside of a corporation. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred percent. Um, it's I I love the the concept of the culture call, and you're mentioning that you know you're taking these calls. So at, I mean, in this capacity, and as you're growing and scaling, Shrad, are you still doing a lot of the screening of of the team members that you guys are onboarding now? I knew you were going to ask me this question, Edwin. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is the natural question, right? Is how long can you keep this going for? Yes. And if I had said that this was the reason for our success, then my feeling is this is still the most one of the most important things I can do. I like that. Um, I so it, I find it very hard, especially in a remote workforce. At the moment, if I'm the glue that is holding all of them together, and then they essentially start to hold each other together. Again, I know this all sounds very esoteric and, you know, very millennially, mm -hmm. but, but this is literally the thing that people don't focus on is when they put a group of people together, they don't tell them what is okay and what is not okay. And like, if you think about it, right, every, like when you're kids, you have, you know, your parents and your siblings that teach you how to interact with each other. You go to school, you have, you know, teachers and, and you know, um, and other, your other students to teach you, help you uh, interact with each other. You go to college, kind of same thing. You couldn't work and then the people are just dropped in there and somehow you're just supposed to all figure it out. This is the difference between the approach I've taken and I would say the traditional approach. No, that's awesome. What's interesting um, as well, and maybe it's an opportunity within every challenge there's opportunities, right? And um, diversity is a, a big topic, whether it's hiring young, old, male, female. But, you know, with this, with what you're doing with WagePoint and having this culture around a remote workforce, you also get an opportunity um, to get diversity in, in other senses, you know, people from different centers uh, around the world. Can you share with us what you are seeing um, some of those benefits that some people don't think about with a remote workforce culture? Absolutely. Yeah. So to your point, the reason we've always been remote is because we're geographically agnostic, right? So we wanted to go where the best person was as opposed to uh, where we had sort of no choice but to congregate. So that's that's and, and with payroll in particular like it's kind of really important for us to find where those people are going to be right like we i don't want to be stuck with all toronto people just because i have to be in toronto i want to go to you know halifax where i think very good customer service exists in halifax for example right um so so that's one reason why we've been um like i said geographically agnostic but the other thing it allows us to do is it actually removes a ton of bias when you're remote so mm -hmm. when I talk to someone, for example, I'm never uh, talking to them with the, uh, like I never do video chats and all that stuff because what I really want is I want the minimum amount of, uh, the minimum amount of, um, of bias or distraction to enter sort of my purview. So mm. as a result, WagePoint, I'm happy to say it looks nothing like a typical tech, tech company at all. <laughs> yeah. And I say this because I know homogeneity is a huge problem in tech. Yes. Um, our culture, like this is another thing that I was telling you, we don't talk about this stuff enough because our heads are always down and we're busy grinding, but we're almost, I think, 50, 50 on, uh, on diversity, uh, in, in, in terms of gender. Mm -hmm. Um, we have, um, we have multiple age groups working. So I'm talking about, you know, I think I don't want to call out our oldest employee, but you know, there's people over 60 and then there's people like, you know, in their twenties. 
Wow. Uh, working together. Yeah. My co-founders are both, one of them is, you know, 20 years older than I am. The other one is 15 years older than I am. So very multi-generational in the way we have approached the business. Um, we have multiple ethnicities, multiple, multiple ethnicities. I can't even name the different ethnicities that we have. Um, and the thing that we do that at least I think is kind of unique is we have, we have uh, folks in rural communities as well, not just in urban centers. And this one has been, this one has been particularly interesting because this is very deliberate for us. We were, we sort of like, uh, I was interviewing someone a, a few years ago and, you know, I mean, you talk to people in tech and there's sort of a, a, a certain, a, like a cadence to the way that they sound and they talk and they always sound kind of urban and, you know, very like hipstery, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, and then I was talking to this woman and she was clearly from, you know, a smaller community, um, in Canada. And, um, uh, I was like, this is sort of one of those times when I am pretty sure I had a bias as well, uh, because she was going to be on a call with a ton of customers. And I was like, well, you know, what is that going to feel like for the customer? And then I had to override that by thinking, well, one of like this, this, this wonderful woman, uh, she was amazing by the way, but like I said, just didn't some, some of the qualifiers were, were just different. And I thought about how she has kids and how kids are going to be like, Oh, so you're working for a tech company and to have those as options for, for people inside of uh, rural communities or like, you know, smaller, really isolated communities. Those are almost impossible, right? They, it's impossible for them to access because so many right. of these tech companies, you know, they are all in the centers. So that, and, and she's an awesome, awesome <laughs> teammate. Like she's done a great job, but it, it takes that kind of dedication to decide that I'm going to do this for, for the company, because I obviously have to care for the company as well, but also because it's not, these are not short term decisions. Some of these are going to be multi-generational decisions. And it's our job to think about it, even in that that kind of lens. So, so yeah. So even for us, like we've we've tried to do things like that that uh, that have actually paid dividends. So I'm I'm pretty happy about that. No, oh, appreciate. It. Thank you for sharing that, Shred. That, that that's really great. Um, I'm always in on as I said before we uh, we jumped on and really proud and happy in terms of the successes you've grown. And what's what what I really in, interested is is what you are doing or you know what are some of the things that you do that ensure that you continually to grow um, as a business leader as a ceo starting from a small startup to you know reaching almost 100 employees like how are you growing as a leader yeah i mean it's a continuous process right um i i, I reflect a lot like i i spend time actually like you know like i will often say in meetings like okay let me go meditate on that problem Nice. And I'm not actually going away to, you know, close my eyes and meditate, but I, I'm spending time not doing something and actually mm -hmm. thinking. And I feel like that's something because we're, we're so used to the idea that only when I'm sending an email, am I actually doing something or only when I'm, you know, talking to someone on the phone, am I actually doing something? But that's, but that's just all the outputs of what you're doing. The actual thing that's happening is inside of you, right? Where you're thinking and I spend time thinking, which is, and, and in fact, more and more as I'm, as I get further into the leadership journey. Um, I also, I am constantly evolving my position. Um, so for example, obviously something you, you can't sit and think like, you know, for half, like for like half a week on a problem when you have 10 customers, right? You just can't. You have to be in hustle more than that time. Always. But as you get bigger, you have to be more strategic about your moves. Um, just like when you're playing a chess game in the first few little while, you're just sort of making quick moves. And then as you get further in and now there's fewer <laughs> pieces to play with, you're like, yeah. I should really think about this a little bit more. Right. So, so that's really, I mean, you know, I, like I said, um, giving, giving yourself the time to think is very important. And then I'm very, very easy to approach and give feedback to, even if it's negative. And I'm totally cool with that. I don't really get offended easily. Um, yeah, sometimes my ego gets a little prickly and I feel a little like, you know, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But, but I try to control that as much as possible. So that's another thing. I, I, I want to stay close to the ground as much as possible and not fly away with the, you know, with the success. And I think that's another thing that will always benefit me and, and help me, help me do better. 
Yeah, no, thank you for sharing. I mean, it's always important to sit uh, with things and, and take time for yourself. And a lot of us, especially in the startup culture ecosystem, may, may not even take the time. They talk about it, right, Shred? But <laughs> to actually have the discipline to 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 do that it is super important. Just just real quickly, I'd love to love it if you could maybe give a shout out or name a person that had a tremendous impact as you as a as a as a business leader. Yeah, actually, um, so. I, my dad actually <laughs> okay yeah he's he i mean he passed away a few years ago but he it's actually his the way he sort of brought us up was to be very inclusive and very much in the idea of building a community and taking care of everybody in that community not just yourself mm-hmm. and wage point is an ode to that or rather everything i do is an ode to the philosophy of my life which has absolutely come from him Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, I, I know I could say like, you know, a business leader, but, yeah. but the truth is that it's, it, your upbringing matters so much in this, you know what I'm saying? Like if you think about yourself, okay. And I know this is about me, but let's turn the tables on you for just a second. Yeah. If you think about yourself and the decisions you've made in your business, how much of it has come from just who you are as a person and who you are as a person has come a lot from, you know, people like your parents and your you know, your siblings and your friends. So in reality, like there's no business leader that is really experiencing what you're experiencing, but all those internal tools that have been given to you, that is, you know, the exact origination point from that, of that. And so that's why I said that it's like, I actually think about my dad as the person who's given me the most amount of perspective and all of that perspective comes into the way I run the business. That's great. Um, really having a blast here, uh, Sharad, but before I, I got a couple more questions, but before I get to them, I'd love it if you could share anything that that's going on in your world, something that you're excited about, maybe some, some upcoming news milestones, something that you want to tell our community first, the product launches, anything else you wanted to share with us? Well, so, you know, there's this few things we have in the works that, you know, our, our chief product officer would would like find me and destroy me if I shared too early. So so I can't do that. But what I can tell you is we recently, um, one of the things that we uncovered while, you know, how you you know what customer development is, I'm assuming, like when you are iterating with the customer. Yeah. And so we, we actually found that our, our system works really well for accountants or bookkeepers Mm -hmm. who want to have multiple customers on, uh, who want to service multiple customers for payroll. So they, you know, they put on five, 10, you know, a hundred in some cases customers on our system and they run their practice using our system. And uh, recently we released an accountant dashboard that actually speaks to just that group of people. So we're actually getting better at uh, segmenting some of these features and deciding how to support them as a group. So that's just something as really nice shout out. And of course, that's a huge, um, a huge reason for that is our, our uh, chief product officer, uh, Lena, who, you know, has essentially done a great job at understanding the customer and, and delivering something that they actually can use and be excited about. Well, very cool. And, and we'll be sure to um, list these links on, on the episode page, Shrad, and that's super exciting as well. Um, before we end, Shrad, I'd love it if you could, you know, share some final thoughts, observations. Ideally, what I like to give out his actionable recommendations that you could share with those who are listening today. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> actionable recommendations. Um, I guess it really <laughs> depends on where, where would you say your audience typically are at in terms of where they are? Are they starting a business? Are they somewhere in the middle? Are they, you know, about to well, the, the, there's a number of them, but I would say for who you are and what you're doing for those who are um, leading and growing a, a, a business that's scaling, you know, what, what are you learning today that you could share uh, to those yeah, in a similar absolutely. situation, whether, whether they're co- the co-founder or not, right? Cause it could be an yeah. executive. Yep. Yeah, I totally understand. Um, I mean, I think, I think that to your point, all of us think that we need to spend more time sort of really reflecting on our thoughts and actions, mm-hmm. but we are so busy <laughs> that we don't always do that. I think that there is, uh, there is a huge amount of emphasis on culture, but to be deliberate about it and to live that every day is really a decision you have to make as a leader. Um, 
a lot of times culture at, at some point will become a, like it won't be top down anymore. It'll be your employees basically building the culture, uh, but you have to live it, you know? So that's just something that, and I know this is again, an esoteric comment, right? This isn't like, you know, go invest more in SEO and see what happens. Um, but I think at the, at the leadership level, you're actually motivating and you're convincing a group of people to get up every day and give it everything they've got. Mm-hmm. And to do that, you have to give them a good reason to do that. And for me, that reason is so that they'll know you're always there for them. Knowing that you are there for them is super important. And to do that, you have to live all the values that you have asked them to live. And that's really my best, uh, my best insight. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Shred. To close, can you tell us where we can find more information about you, WagePoint, or anything else you'd like to share with us today? Well, I mean, uh, you could definitely go to wagepoint.com and sign up to uh, to have us help you with payroll. I hope that is something that everyone today will do so that, you know, I uh, continue to I continue to be able to hire people and, you know, make more, um, make happier uh, Canadians, I think, because most of our workforce is Canadian. But, uh, but yeah, like, you know, c- please come check out WagePoint. Uh, if you want to check me out or, or connect with me on LinkedIn, you'll find me, Shad Rao. Uh, I would say that's the other best place to get in touch. Otherwise, you know, I hope someone out there has actually benefited from, you know, from listening to, uh, to me speak from a, um, I guess, from an EQ standpoint and not fully an IQ one. Not no, always, I, love- I should say. It- it, it was great. I really enjoyed it. But Shrad, again, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us on the Business Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Edwin. I appreciate you having me on. That's it, Biz Leaders. Thank you for joining me on another episode of the Business Leadership Podcast. This was episode 146 with Shrad Rao. If you want to learn more about Shrad, WagePoint, or anything else that we discussed, please go to the episode website at thebusinessleadership.com slash 146 do join me on my private facebook group where i will discuss this episode answer your questions and connect you with other like-minded business leaders simply search for the business leadership group directly in the facebook thank you again to our episode sponsor slingshot voip a canadian telecommunications leader in business voice over ip services slingshot understands the growing needs of business leaders and partners with you to ensure that your company is aligned with your vision, growth, and sustainability of the future. And lastly, if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, rate, and leave a comment on your favorite podcast later. Thank you again. Edwin signing off. Thank you for listening to the Business Leadership Podcast at thebusinessleadership.com. Thank you.